Votin, if physicists are so passionate about this concept of quantum gravity, in fact, there's controversy and energy, and it's, it's just, it's, it's a cauldron of activity. Why, why is that? Why does quantum gravity cause such commotion? Okay, um, well, first of all, you have to have a quantum theory of gravity. You just have no choice. Why? So, you know that it has to be there. Why? Well, because nothing else works, and you know when nothing else works. So, take general relativity, the best theory that we have of space-time. And of gravity. And of gravity. Uh, so, what it tells you is it predicts black holes exist. And we've basically checked, and yes. that's correct. But it doesn't actually tell you what's inside a black hole. What it says is it's infinity inside a black hole, which means it says nothing. Mm. Then you take another great theory, which is quantum field theory, which is the best theory that we have of matter. We've also tested, works great, but then you ask what answers do I get if I look at very, very small distances. Again, I get infinity. Now, what, what does this mean? It means I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and I know precisely when I don't know what is going on, which is when the force of gravity becomes really strong. So you know with every other force, and when it becomes really strong, you have to have a quantum description of it. So what happens inside a black hole is the force of gravity becomes very strong, and you need a quantum description of that. You do not have it, you know it has to be, your, all your theories break down, you need it. And so, and so by extension, it wouldn't be only for a black hole, it would affect the beginning of the universe, and in fact, it would affect everything. Yes, and, but the thing is that also once you open that box, yeah. you don't really know what's going to come out. Because <laughs> it would be nice if the quantum theory of gravity was restricted to a black hole. Maybe you could say, okay, forget about it. We have a great understanding right, of right. everything else, and it doesn't matter. Right. But, but it's, it, this is probably not true. Because if you continue down that path, then you say, okay, what do I need to understand? I, understand what, I need to understand what happens to space-time inside a black hole. Now, probably that really means that what I know as space and time is not really fundamental. Mm. The, the most familiar thing that we have, the thing that we live in, that surrounds us, space and time, might actually not be true. Now, maybe the motivation for considering that question comes from answering, uh, asking what happens inside a black hole. But if the most familiar thing is not really fundamental or it's not really true, who knows <laughs> what, what will happen yeah. afterwards. And I guess that's partly why there is so much energy, because yeah. it touches on the things that are closest to you. So if you're a normal person, it would be space and time. If you're a physicist, also quantum theory is very close mm -hmm. to you. And it also touches on that, because whether and another possibility, somehow the notion of quantum is different. So you said, uh, so I said that I, one needs to have a quantum version of gravity because we always need a quantum version of a force when we got high energies, but maybe not. Maybe that is not the answer, that's a wrong path, and the answer is that we do not know, need a quantum version of gravity, we need something else. That, again, would change what we understand by quantum, and quantum makes everybody very excited. <laughs> okay, now one of the main approaches to quantum gravity is string theory. Right. But there are other approaches as well. So give me a, a, a sense of, of the different theories and how they work together, and what, how they're similar, how they're different. I mean, it, it's a, it's a, it can be quite confusing to see all the different approaches. Sure. So you could basically make a map of every choice you think you could make about what could possibly not be true about what we know. <laughs> so maybe quantum theory is not true. Maybe space-time is not really there. Maybe we don't live in four dimensions. <laughs> maybe there is more matter than what we have. <laughs> Just about anything that you can consider is being looked at. Um, it's not as simple as that, in that the people that work on one choice have actually very good reasons to think that that is the way to go. Um, it's not just that you go and see, okay, what are the possibilities, and I'm gonna pick this for whichever arbitrary reason. Um, so you, you have a choice to make, and people make a choice. But there is a huge variety, and since we don't actually know which one of these is true, um, I think it's pretty difficult to decide. Of course, you can wait and see what the answers are. 
So some, some choices are more fruitful than others. And that is always the case with physics. Just to get an understanding of these different choices, I know string theory talks about all forces being the, uh, the, the product of, of its strings vibrating in multiple ten dimensions and that the different forces, the different particles are expressions of different, right, different right. vibrations of these, spring, right, of these strings. Right. Now, what are some other theories and what are their basic characteristics? So, so string theory says that, and then usually it doesn't say something very special about space-time. Somehow you're supposed to understand what happens to space-time through what happens to these unified, if you like, interactions of the particles. Yeah. And possibly it's something really different, but we still do not understand what. Um, so, for example, um, loop quantum gravity is a fairly conservative approach to what you could do. There, what you do is that you don't look at what happens to the matter in the universe, you just look at space-time. And you try to make a quantum version of space-time. And there you do something, you, you just try to follow what you've done before in physics. So you've taken electricity and you've made quantum electrodynamics, which is a quantum analog of that. And that's pretty much what one tries to do. You take gravity and you try to make quantum gravity. By There are pretty well-known recipes on how to do that, and you turn the handle and get there. Um, there are other things that you can try to do. Um, for example, you could... Um, um, try to make models of space-time. So there is the possibility that space-time is an emergent thing. In the same way that ice is an emergent um, structure from oxygen and hydrogen. Um, so there what you do is that you make some model, pretty much a model of atoms of space, and then you try to understand how this very special phase that we are in of a smooth three-dimensional space um, comes out. Mm. And there are also pretty well understood methods of doing that. Um, and there's a whole other variety. You can then try to attack quantum theory and try to say that quantum theory is not fundamental. Because yeah. um, you have to harmonize the two, general relativity and quantum so theory, so you can attack e either side. Yeah, so, but usually people attack general relativity. Quantum theory is harder to attack, oh. but people do that too. <laughs> so, of course, it, it may be that quantum theory is not really correct at the fundamental level, but that is always harder to do. But, of course, in the, in the field of quantum gravity, that is also tried. What, uh, w w what are you doing? What, what type of, wh where's your focus? Where do you think the, uh, the answer lies? I'm not so sure that I know where the answer lies, but I guess I would, my bet would be that... Um, Space-time is not fundamental, but it's also not quantum. So the things that I do not understand what quantum space-time might mean. So, for example, I can translate space-time into notions of causality, what's before and what's after, right? So, um, so for example, you are here listening to my talk because I'm talking and somehow the sound gets to you and um, you can understand what I'm saying. Um, so this is a very basic not, notion. Not all of, of it, but most of it. <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah, right. That is the quantum part. Um, so now if I was supposed to make a quantum superposition of this, then what I would be saying is that we are sitting in these two chairs here, and I'm talking, but you hear me and you don't hear me at the same time. Mm. So that would be a superposition of causality. And it seems to me that this is much different than the notion of two particles being at the same place, uh, at two different places at the same time. The fact that something happens and doesn't happen at the same time is really weird. <laughs> so that, there I give up.